Thanks for downloading Scott Harold's podcast. These discussions come from his radio show on SOSradio.net. It's a Christian radio station you can plug in with for music or conversation. It's just what God has done in my heart, what God has done in me, who I was, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago to who I am now through this journey about how God has changed my heart. Thanks for supporting the podcast. We're talking to Francis Frangipane on SOS Radio today. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So we're going to be talking about prayer strategy this Saturday at the Citywide Unity Prayer Breakfast. This is a fun thing we do about twice a year. Hundreds of churches from all over the valley, they come together. and We get to pray together. and You're going to be talking through a few different ideals behind prayer strategy and the battlefield that goes into our minds. <laughs> well, the whole scheme of things starts with our unity with Christ and one another because of Christ. And where the brethren dwell together in unity, there, in that location, in that community, there God commands a blessing, life forevermore. So if we want the benefits of God's blessing, we need to work together in unity, in humility, in love, in vision. I'm excited about coming out there. These are good guys. They're strong. They're people walking with God, and we're going to see some great things happening. So, Francis, you talk a lot about being transformed in God's presence. I think for a lot of us, we try to pray. We say, okay, I pray, but I don't know if I get the answers. Or I pray, and I'm not really feeling anything. How do we actually become transformed by communicating with God? What have you learned? Well, part of what I learned is that we have to be persistent. Jesus talks about the righteous person who persists and he bears fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. But the key is persistence. And most of us, myself included, I tend to not be persistent. I tend to, well, if it doesn't happen, if I don't get an answer, it's probably not God's will. If you're not being battled, if you're not fighting, if you're not having a fast and you're not having a to reach into God's heart, you're probably under warfare already. That persistence, that perseverance, there's got to be a little bit of muscle in our spirit. I'm not talking about relying on our flesh. I'm just talking about not giving up in spite of the battle. And there's some things, you know, that God God is looking to develop in us. Let perseverance have its work, the scripture says. There's a work that persevering, there's a place, a breakthrough that we can fight our way into the presence of God's love, throw off that heaviness, that weariness. You know, the scripture says in Galatians that we will reap if we do not faint. And there's a lot of us have fainted, frankly. We've been in the midst of the battle and we just need a touch. And I'm anticipating the Lord's going to revive us and restore us. And we'll see some really getting our zeal getting our stride back, getting our vision back, and moving on with the things of God. We're talking to Francis Frangipane on SWS Radio today, and he's going to be speaking at the Citywide Unity Prayer Breakfast going on 9.30 this Saturday at the historic 5th Street School. But Francis, we know there's a physical world, and we know there's a spiritual dimension that we can't see, but we don't want to blame all our drama on the devil, but how do we discern when something's sin and when something's actually an attack? What have you learned? Well, If we're praying according to the will of God, we will have the request. It's just common sense, I think, or maybe wisdom to not assume everything that crosses our mind is God's will, number one. I mean, sometimes, you know, our flesh can be creative, and we could be hemmed in by the issues of our past. Maybe we've failed a couple of times, and and we're not getting right with the Lord. I think every spiritual battle that we get into, it comes down, there's a certain point where we need to examine our heart. David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, thou will not hear me. The Lord will answer our prayers. He'll help us. He'll lift us up. He's good, and he's good all the time. But we also, the message isn't just the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The message is God is close enough to reach, but we need to have our hearts right with the Lord also. Amen? We need to have our spirit right with the Lord. So there's a left foot, right foot movement, 
And when the enemy comes, you know, he'll come in like a thief. He'll come in. There'll be a big hubbub, chaos. Or he could come in quiet, sneaking around, you know, and comes to steal, kill. Those are covert things that we don't always recognize. But if we know what God spoke to our heart and we know that the enemy is a liar, we'll break through. We'll have that breakthrough. And it'll be exceeding abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think. We're talking about breaking through in our faith with Francis Frangipane on SWS Radio. You've written a lot about the three battlegrounds. Could you explain the battlegrounds that you've written about? Yeah. You know, there's the book, The Three Battlegrounds, covers the dynamic of the battleground of our mind and learning how to take our thoughts captive, learning how to wait on the Lord and get in stride and in sync and in harmony with God. There's that part of us where our victory begins with the name of Jesus on our lips, but it's not consummated until the nature of Jesus is in our hearts. And so there's that first battleground is our own soul. It's significant that the place where Jesus died was called Golgotha, or the place of the skull. That's something that we ourselves, we need to die to being controlled in the place of our skull, in our brain, in our old nature, in our undisciplined life. There's a place also in the next level, next battleground, there's this place of the church. And God wants to see the church become more than a conqueror. He's given us grace to rise and stand before him as warriors, as his heralds. And so we've seen the battleground of the church between churches. Jesus said, if you're at the altar and there you remember somebody has something against you, that's body ministry. That's the church. You recognize somebody has something against you. He says, leave your offering and go be reconciled to your brother. There's things we can do to heal the divisions in the body of Christ. And I always tell people, if you're at the altar, leave your offering. I like that Jesus didn't say, take your offering with you. He said, leave your offering and go and be reconciled. But that ministry of reconciliation is a big deal in God's heart. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wished to settle accounts. And he wants to see unity and harmony in his kingdom. And so we're called to bring healing, be restorers of the breach, be those who stand in the gap. That's the second battleground. And then the third one, there's the heavenly places. That's the spirit realm. Paul says in Ephesians 6, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And and we have something to say unto the principalities and powers. And that's that Jesus has disarmed the enemy. And we come to enforce and to pray and to stand with God's people and to stand with one another and to discern the spirit over the locale and be able to come in an opposite spirit. There's a realm of warfare, and we should expect that God wants to teach us. He doesn't just want to abide in us. He wants us to hear his heart, hear his word, to live a righteous life so that when we speak, our words have weight and they have depth and they have the authority of Christ. So good. We're talking to Francis Frangipane on SWS Radio today. He's going to be speaking at the Citywide Unity Prayer Breakfast coming up this Saturday morning. We're serving the food about 9.30. We're starting about 10 o'clock. We'll go till about noon. But Francis, what are you going to be speaking on this week? Well, I'm hoping to talk about just the unity and build on what's already been started here. I'll share a little bit about it. When God said, let us make man in our image, going back into the book of Genesis, the first chapter, it's the Trinity speaking to itself. Don't ask me how that all is. But the, <laughs> the verse actually reads, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You know, we think about the image of God. We're thinking about the likeness of God. And what does that mean? That means reasoning power, creative power. God desired to make man so that man can have fellowship with him. So there's spiritual power. But there's something that we seem to overlook, and that's that the Trinity is speaking in that chapter. The unity of God is speaking in let us make man in our image. 
we are a corporate being. When we become a Christian, we're born again of the Spirit of God. There's not a lot of spirits. There's one Spirit. He manifests himself in three distinct ways, as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And so I'm just encouraged that God's in these days, he's restoring, he's building up, he's bringing back our hearts from the unbiblical traditions of division, and he's bringing us into a time and a place of healing, and I'm excited about it. We're talking to Francis Frangipane on SWS Radio. We were talking a lot about the battlegrounds of the mind a few minutes ago. But, Francis, what is the best way to actually start to take our thoughts captive? Because I think a lot of times we're not even taught in this culture that that's even possible anymore. (laughs) Yeah, 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 you're right. Maybe you should be talking at the conference. Um, (laughs) But actually, it's a discipline. It's a step toward maturity. It's a step toward obedience. But he says, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. It's Christ's obedience in me. I just got to capture my thought that is offering me a different alternative, a different reality than the reality in which I walk in and live in and, and I fellowship with God. We need to be discerning and discerning of spirits. We need to know the voice, that still small voice, that voice that whispers, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the left or to the right. The obedience to Christ, and Christ is the Word. He's the Word of God. Everything, all things come into being through Him. So we need to be a people who are capable of capturing our thoughts, of recognizing that we're in a time, we live in a war zone. We can't just throw out a picnic blanket and expect we're not going to get a little bit of warfare here. But of course, David even threw out a picnic blanket. If that's God's heart, David said he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I mean, there's a place of protection that you've cleaned house and you bound the enemy and his influence around you. There's a place where the presence of God gives us deep peace. The God of peace, the scripture says, the God of peace will crush Satan beneath your feet. So I'm just trusting we're going to put on our armor. We're going to enjoy the joy of the Lord. And we're going to 